It's cold in that water. <laughs> it's not so bad. It's not so bad. We survived God with us. And I believe all heaven rejoice we have this wonderful, great, great baptism today. It's great uh, when we give our hearts to Lord, Brother Thomas. And he promised us to be with us all the time, right? Always with us. So, Brother Thomas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon. Um, I'd just like to uh, share a little testimony um, from my friend Thomas. Today was a very special day. Thomas was baptized. And so we want to share a little bit about that story. And I'm going to start first, Thomas, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, it was about <clears throat> three years ago, maybe three and a half years ago, uh, my wife and I, we purchased a piece of property. Now, um, we don't have a lot of money, but we thought it would be a good investment because of the timber value that was on this property. And so we moved forward prayerfully. Um, we felt that God was leading us to purchase this property of 120 acres. Well, we invested everything we had into this 120 acres and only to come to find out that it was only 75 acres. And so... <clears throat> Much to our dismay and much to our chagrin of our pocketbook, we tried to resolve these missing 45 acres, and it was to no avail. Um, and so I will speak on my own behalf. I became very discouraged, and I murmured against God. And um, it was a very difficult year for me. Um, because it took me a year to say, okay, Lord, uh, we've tried all that we can to resolve this. Um, me becoming frustrated and upset was not resolving anything. And so um, I'm thankful for a couple different reasons for this experience. As painful as it was, is because God helped me to see what was in my heart. And it wasn't until I saw what was in my heart that I come to understand better where I stood in relationship to Jesus Christ. I didn't trust him. I didn't believe that he had my best interests um, at heart, and so I became discouraged. But after a year, because of God's goodness towards me and his love, his continual love that's always drawing me, he helped me to say, okay, Lord, I give it all to you. I can't do anything about it. I, I can only trust in you. So I give it over to God, and for another year, <clears throat> um, nothing went um, changed with the property or our status. We were um, experiencing a um, very difficult lifestyle because, again, all that we had was into this property, and, and yet God gave us a peace, and um, we really came to um, letting it go. We did, but couldn't really understand why, um, but... It was two years after we purchased it, we found out why. Um, because God brought this man into the picture. And then I'm going to turn it over to you, Thomas, to um, take it from there. All right, first of all, I'd like to say praise the Lord. Um, today I got baptized for the second time. Um, I was baptized first off in a Pentecostal church. Um, it's been several years, uh, but this baptism in the seven-day Advent movement and beliefs um, means everything to me. I feel at home. I feel at peace. I feel that I'm in a truth that makes sense to me. And um, getting to the story, um, I was looking for property for about two and a half years. So, um, I live outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and um, we were tired of the city. We wanted to move to a country property even before I realized that God was instructing us to move, which was a blessing in disguise. 
so um, my wife Nancy had mentioned to me um, I was trying to pull her out west uh, Colorado Montana and I needed to compromise uh, I was being selfish and was wanting to go where I wanted to go instead of where would be best for both of us so I compromised and started looking closer to where we lived now um, I was on Northwest Georgia Craigslist and I had my boundaries set at I think 300 miles so I seen an ad that was in Knoxville Tennessee and I thought what the heck I will give it a see and I clicked on it and it was um, the 75 or 6 acres whatever it was and um, I thought well I'll give it a call you know so I called and this lady answered and she said yeah the land's still for sale and she introduced herself as Dana and I asked to see the land and she uh, responded to say that they were two hours away from the land and then I asked would it be alright if I would just walk the property with her permission and she granted that to me so I was rained out of work and um, so I decided to drive up by myself so when I got there to the property um, it was much much more surreal to me being there than anything I envisioned. Uh, the property is absolutely beautiful. Um, when I shut my door of my truck, I couldn't hear anything. And I just stood there for a minute and just took it all in, the, how peaceful, and how crisp the air was there in Kentucky. And so, Long story short, I went back home, told my wife about it, and we decided to try to purchase the land. So we met with Kaylin and Dana to discuss arrangements to, to purchase the land, and they give us a time limit, and uh, we started our procedures to, to get the land. And in the course of that, I noticed that there was something, I told my wife, I said, I think these people are Christian people. Um, we had told them to have a blessed day and they returned the same to us. So that prompted me to start asking questions. And um, at first, um, Kalen, he wasn't very pushy about his religion. I had to um, kind of ask him about it. and. One thing led to another, and um, he told me they were Seventh-day Adventists, and I don't think I'd ever even heard of, I might have seen a sign, but never paid any attention to it. But one thing led to another, and here, what, eight, nine months later, I was baptized today. So the land's been a blessing, but only secondary to bringing me into this faith this truth of the seven day advent message so i praise god and if the land ultimately works out that will be good as well but i'm just feel like a lone wolf survivor i ask myself all the time why me lord what was different about me um, because i truly think this message is the end time message and i feel very blessed to be a part of it. So that's kind of my t short version of my testimony. And uh, I know that your your story's not over, Thomas. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> there's much more to be said, I'm sure, as things unfold, because God has brought you in for a reason. Mm -hmm. He has a purpose for you. And um, I just want to share to those who are listening as well that, you know, it was one of my biggest trials that I had ever faced losing 45 acres of land. And yet, because of that circumstance and allowing God to do what He needed to do in my heart, it's been one of the greatest blessings in my life. Mm, praise the Lord. Um, and so I just want to encourage those of you who may be listening that 
whatever your circum circumstances may be, you don't know God's uh, ultimate purpose. Who knows what's behind all of the things that are going on now? Just think if we submit to God, what He could do through us. We don't know. And so I just hope that you're encouraged that even though something looks like it's very discouraging, just like Joseph, he was put into prison. But look at the ministry work he did there. You look at Daniel, taken as a captive into Babylon. Look at the wonderful things that were brought forth because of that. We can all be Joseph's and Daniel's in this society today. But we need to be willing to bear the um, trials of life there for our edification and for a purpose and ultimately it is that God could be glorified in all things that he could reach those who had never heard the truth before but we must be willing to endure the trials of the day and so may God bless you I'm very encouraged Thomas mm -hmm. and I know that God has a great work for you and for his wife Nancy and I believe even 99 <laughs> you want to wave to the subscribers <laughs> homework <laughs> because now that you've been put into the Lord's service that's just the start of it, that's huh? just the start of it because you know um, when when we become Christians it's easy to be complacent and so what we did is we put together um, some literature of what we feel would be the best best literature that um, yeah. We could take to those that we know. I There's even... even a packet in there that shows you how to do Bible studies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, this is great. Uh... Because when you think about Christianity, it's not understanding the gospel. That's part of it. But when you look at Jesus' life, it was because he did what he did. It's doing it. It's helping others. It's teaching them. It's showing them the way and giving of yourself. So This is great. I'll hand these out. And use them for witnessing yeah and so that that's how you grow when you share yes thank you